So we're going to start now talking about simple harmonic motion in a more mathematical way. And I hope that very, very soon you're going to agree with me that this is a completely understandable graphical representation of what's happening in a simple harmonic system. So I hope you can see that if we took our um, pendulum example, if we pull the pendulum as far as possible to one side, we get here our maximum amplitude. And if we let it go, the pendulum will pass back down through the equilibrium position, back through the, um, the far side, and then back up to the equilibrium position. And we'll keep doing this over and over again. And in the course of doing that, uh, unless there's an external force acting, energy will be conserved. So at this point here, it has all its energy as potential energy. So it's pulled out to the side, it's got maximum gravitational potential energy, it then converts that gravitational potential energy into kinetic energy, and as it passes through the centre, it's got maximum kinetic energy, it comes back down to its other side, to its other maximum amplitude, it stops moving for a moment, it's got zero kinetic energy, and it has got maximum potential energy again. And that swapping backwards and forwards continues on and on and on. And I hope you can see that the time taken for one complete oscillation, T. So that's a perfect system. However, perfect systems don't exist. So I hope you can see that we can have damped systems. And I'm sure you've heard of dampening before. When systems are damped, they are slowly losing um, energy out of their system one way or another. They're losing it as heat, they're losing the sound, um, it's being absorbed by something and so on and so forth. So I hope you can see in a pendulum example it wouldn't look like this. Instead over time it would slowly start getting lower and slower and slower and we get what's called a dampening envelope. So you can see the amplitude is slowly decreasing. Now obviously in a real um, pendulum system, well it's not very symmetrical but I hope you'll forgive me, in a real pendulum system that would take a long time to happen. Dampening um, through air resistance takes a long time. You can leave a pendulum swinging for ages and you'd know that because grandfather clocks don't need to be wound up every five minutes. However, you can set up systems where dampening happens more quickly. And I hope you can see, for example, in the suspension of your car, that you wouldn't want the dampening uh, to take too long. You wouldn't want your car to keep bouncing for ages and ages and ages. So you might start with a, a big displacement and it decreases very, very quickly. And so the dampening envelope in this case is much, much, much sharper, or decay envelope. So damped systems um, basically work by reducing the amplitude by deliberately uh, using up energy. So we've got one more thing that I want to talk about in this section, which is resonance. Now you might think that resonance doesn't really follow on for this, and I hope you're not going to get confused by the fact that the diagrams look similar. I trust you're familiar with the idea of resonance from um, your understandings about music and things. You know, we all know that, let's say you're walking alongside someone, you guys fall into step. Um, if you're walking along, particularly if you're holding hands or you've got your arms around someone, you're going to fall into step. And some people do that more easily than others, depending on the physical makeup of their system. So a lot of resonant systems are forced by something. There has to be some energy put into it to make it behave the way it does. So um, let's say we had our, our swing example and someone's pushing the swing. Okay, now we all know that you should push the swing when it reaches you, yeah? So you give the swing a little push and when it comes back, you push it just as it's moving away from you, just as it's coming back down from its maximum um, displacement from its amplitude position. If we push it any other time, we're not going to get a big amplitude. And we know that from our understanding of the mechanical system. So we could say, well, if we have our swing, which is uh, basically a pendulum, 
If we have our swing and we push it at a certain frequency, let's say this is the frequency, we're going to get a big amplitude out of it. However, if we push it at some other frequency, the amplitude we get out of it won't be as big. And I hope you can see, I hope you can see that that's the case based on its, um, uh, its, its mechanical makeup. So down here we've got a low frequency and you can see we've got small amplitude. As we move into here, okay, because this is a frequency graph, you can see the frequency is getting smaller and smaller as we go along, but we've got a certain point where we have a bigger amplitude, and we call that the natural frequency. So if you're feeling um, inquisitive about this, you can go and look up the Tacoma, uh, Tacoma Bridge. Tacoma Bridge was designed without consideration of a particular wind frequency that blew up that valley. And it's fascinating to watch the mechanical structure of the bridge interacting with the natural frequency of the wind. So of course, these are things that have real life consequences. So um, the resonant frequency here, or the natural frequency, is the frequency at which a system likes to move. And we're going to examine that in a bit more detail, but I hope you can see that most systems will have this kind of natural frequency.